Jibs, the artist that I was working with, was signed to. So whenever we go out to L.A., we are in, you know, Interscope in the building in Universal. And then at one night at Jimmy Iovine's Grammy party, uh, he was still not dressed like really super flashy, but he was the most powerful person in that room because not only it was his event, it was his club. And he's also in, in business with Dr. Dre. I work hard. I've sometimes, when I was just starting out, I seen the sun come up twice and no sleep in between that. And I shouldn't have done that. I've slept on the floor in studios. I've slept in the car after the Grammys. I overworked the heck out of myself and I wish I wouldn't have done that. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my home studio. I am Archie Beats and I am here to help. And man, today is a pretty awesome day. I know uh, my home studio den in life always look a little different. I'm holding the camera, shaking it around and whatnot. But I wanted to do a little something different since I'm about to crank up this mix for my boy, Boyce. I'm about to get this mix going. And I wanted to check in with you guys. I was thinking like, um, man, I've come such a long way. And I wish I knew these five things before I started out. So let's go. Starting out in this industry is very challenging. It can be intimidating. It can be confusing. You can get the wrong information and you can get some great information, but not execute it how you should. And I'm here today to help you guys with that. I'm here today to give you guys the five things that I wish I knew before I started out, man, because your boy was stumbling around for a little bit. And really quick, before we get started, if you guys are interested in anything that you've seen in my home studio, be sure to click below and check it out. I have everything listed in the description below. And I also have other gear that could possibly help you on your creative journey. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you won't miss another video. And you guys don't wanna miss it if you get videos like this, right? Give me a thumbs up. But yeah, before I start discussing, I want to know what are some challenges in you guys' career when you started out or are you starting out now? And what are you confused about? I'm really trying to get my comment section going so I, we can have like open discussions because that's what this channel is about. I, I really want this to be candid and I want it to be helpful as well. And I want you guys to help each other out. This is why we have to keep this audio ecosystem going. And really quick, you guys always ask about how the heck does the Neve 5211 sounds? You guys are listening to it right now. But here's another treat. You guys are listening to the compressor section, the 1176 LN on the Universal Audio 6176. It's going out of the Neve into the compressor section and into the Apollo 8 where we're getting that true bypass, that Apollo 8 quad, we're getting that true bypass of the preamp using external pre's. And, and it sounds good. It's, it, it, it sounds great. So let, let's see right here. Let's see. Let's, let's do the output that output right there and now let's crank this input up where you can get that compression so y'all hear that so we doing this in real time man we doing that in real time let me get that back right may play with the attack a little oh, man sounds absolutely fantastic i can't wait for you guys to hear the vocals that i've sung with this but we're not going to get into that right now we're talking about these things i wish i would have known the first thing i wish i would have known and you guys hear me say this all the time is that you really don't need expensive gear to start out. Just start. Don't obsess over, hey, the new capacitors or it having a certain output transformer or input transformer with a preamp or anything like that. Just, just get in there. Get whatever piece of gear you have access to and just learn it. Work on it. Develop your skills. Work on your chops. And you won't be disappointed. When it's time to invest, you know it. And if you can invest, please do. I see so many people start out and obsess over it, especially um, some of the younger guys that start out in this industry. They're super obsessive over all the, the technical stuff. It's okay. It's always great to be a scientist. It's always great to be a student in a technical way in this industry. Hell, I'm one. I'm a nerd when it comes to this stuff. I love it so much but it will stop you from working and it will stop you from moving forward. So you don't really want to obsess over that. The next thing is a lot of people not going to probably like this, but it is network, 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 network. And this is a statement you guys are probably not going to like. I have never acquired any job or anything in this industry by filling out an application. Join your local communities when it comes to the music industry or film, like, like go to the events, talk to people, 
don't, even if you are probably the biggest artist in that town, talk to the smallest artist in that town. If you're the smallest artist in that town, talk to the biggest artist in that town. Talk to the engineer. Talk to the manager. Listen, guys, this industry is crazy. You will literally be surprised who a person can turn to or what they can become within three to five months of just working, just working on that craft. Don't overwork it and overdo it. But you want to be affiliated with the people in your creative space because it's not really about status. It's about being creative and, and bouncing ideas off each other. And then when those people or if you become successful, you reach back and you grab those people that was essential and that was uh, vital in the start of your career. And these people usually come from you networking or somebody could be in a room that's already there. Most of the time, especially like when I'm floating around my Grammy events and stuff like that, the most successful people are not saying anything or not flashy and not, you know, have all these things. You could see a, a pair of Louis Vuitton or someone on their feet or something like that, but it's not going to be obvious that they are extremely successful and probably the most powerful person in the room. I never forget it, meeting Jimmy Iovine and, and going to the record label, you know, no, no, no disrespect to Jimmy, but Jimmy was never like flashy. He wasn't dressed, you know, dressed. He had his hat on, he had his t-shirt on, and this is the most powerful person at the time. He was working like 600 700 million dollars and he was the he was the chairman over the record label that um jibs the artist that i was working with was signed to so whenever we go out to la we are in you know interscope in the building in universal and then at one night at jimmy Iveen's grammy party uh, he was still not dressed like really super flashy but he was the most powerful person in that room because not only it was his event it was his club and he's also in, in business with dr dre you'll be surprised at what networking can do like i said i've never gotten anything from filling out an application it's all solely on networking the next thing is time and patience put that effort in don't think it's going to happen overnight because it's definitely not and even if you are the best creative and talented person in the world it's not going to happen overnight you have to sit there and 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 build your craft and take that time that time that it takes for you to get there take that to work on your chops and work on your craft and just just be patient it takes time guys it may take six months may take two years may take three years may take five years but just be patient patient it teaches you a lot as well and it's really a great exercise when it comes to you completing loan projects in this recording industry i know some film projects that i work on takes a half of a year to complete <laughs> and that's what that patient comes in that exercise muscle of patience so you definitely have that patience y'all and when i first started out here's a crazy thing <laughs> i'm guilty i didn't i didn't really take these things serious the next thing is is that i wanted to be this analog guy and like oh digital is that's for the birds and digital did not sound terrible it just didn't sound analog but at the time when i was starting i was like oh yeah i'm an analog i'm a, a, a young guy and I like the old school way and all of that and I, I wish I would have learned a lot of the digital stuff in the beginning stages I was just completely analog I said hand me a SSL 4000G and a, a patch bay and a Studer 800A tape machine and I clean my tape machine and do all of it I should have went there. I should have learned everything. And I'm doing it now because my studio is a hybrid. We have analog stuff here and digital computers and plugins. And I do like plugins. Some plugins better over the analog, you know, some of the analog effects processors because the plugins are technically digital, but they give you a lot more you can tweak them better. It gives you a lot more control over whatever effects you want. And I, I just like that. So imagine one plug in, right? That's on your computer screen. Now imagine if that was converted to hardware and it's like a thousand different switches and a thousand different programs. It wouldn't even fit in the analog gear or effects process or anything like that. So digital can be very, very, very um, convenient. But um, I do still do prefer analog, but it's better to learn both ways. And because you're going to be, you know, some major artists are going to come to you if that's what you want to do and say, hey, I want a completely in the box mix. I don't want any analog because it takes too long. Or you may get a job as a recording engineer. And it's like it may take too long. Or you may get a job as a film composer and they don't want to stay in digital. They want to convert it to an orchestra or, and get an orchestrator and a conductor and just do the full 70 piece orchestra for a film. I'm not saying like I'm not, that's probably a little bit too far, but still it, it happens. It can happen. And if you don't know how the analog gear works, 
watch reviews. Subscribe to the manufacturers of that Analog Gear YouTube channel. We are in a super, super, super information age, and everybody is really giving out vital information, free reviews, free knowledge. The manufacturers of these analog companies, the manufacturers of the digital companies, subscribe to their channel, man. Watch Sweetwater. Watch Universal Audio. These, these guys are really, like especially with Universal Audio, the foundation of that company is analog. And it was great to see them take all of this analog action and convert it to digital plugins, the UAD plugin. I don't want to make this seem like it's a, a sponsored video, but it's not. But it, it's it's incredible what Universal Audio were able to do. And a lot of the plugins are the analog signal flow. So, hey, jump in there. And the last but least thing that I wish I would have known is take time to yourself take some time off because you will get burnt out and you won't be able to create for weeks sometimes even months and you'll get in a bad slump you have to be mentally physically and emotionally there and you have to take care of that you are the real thing that is making all of this stuff work in this recording studio and you definitely have to take care of yourself i work hard i've sometimes when i was just starting out i seen the sun come up twice and no sleep in between that and I shouldn't have done that I've slept on the floor in studios I've slept in the car after the Grammys I overworked the heck out of myself and I wish I wouldn't have done that but hey it taught me a lot and now that I have a wife and I have a son and I'm I, I take care of me I really take care of me my, my wife and I have been together for 10 over 10 years 11 years now I said over 10 years, but 11 years now. And we are birth, we are both workaholics. And we realize that, hey, we got to take time off. And, you know, not just when we go to sleep at night and watch a movie or whatnot, like we do almost every night, but we need to take some days off and and, and kick it. You know, then we got our boy, you know, we're both stay at home parents. It's, it's really like cool to have that time to spend with him and spend hours with him every single day. So we, we, we can't burn ourselves out, y'all, because if you crash and fail, there is no continuation of your storyline and your career and your, your journey to success in this creative industry. So take care of yourself, man. But I really do hope that you guys got some vital information out of this video. I wish I would have known these five things and I wish I would have took advantage of them when I started out. But hey, we, we turned out pretty good. Listen to my boy in there crying in the background. But we turned out pretty good and we're moving forward. And I got a lot of new gear that I just purchased as well. And I'm about to change out a lot of stuff in here. I know y'all like, man, why you keep upgrading this stuff? Hey, it, it keeps getting better. If you can, if you can invest, invest. If, if you Keep that in mind. When it's time to invest, you know it. And if you can invest, please do. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss another video. And also comment below some of your challenges. I really want to, like I said, I really want to engage with you guys and see um, some of the challenges that you guys have been through. So let's go. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Archie Beats. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Archie Beats. Both ends with a Z. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. Don't forget to be great and create. This is your boy Archie Beats. And I'm signing off. Archie Beats on the beat. Yeah. yeah.